So we're going to integrate uh, z around this triangle. So this symbol gamma uh, represents the path from O to A to B back down to O. Now for people who know about complex variables already, know enough, uh, they'll immediately see that the answer is zero. Um, there's a theorem we'll talk about very soon that explain, explains why the answer has to be zero. But we're just going to do this as an exercise really to understand in more, de more detail exactly what a contour integral, as this is called, does. So when, it, when you see a contour integral like this, or a line integral, you're integrating the function z along various lines. Okay. So we can split this up into three pieces, obviously. Um, so let's just write it sort of symbolically like this. So we've got the integral of z from z equals o to a plus the integral from a to b and plus finally the integral from b to o. So um, now the dz depends on uh, which direction you're going. So z, as always, we write as x plus i y, or obviously x and y are real. Um, and dz depends on uh, which line we're going along. So in this case, when we go from O to A, y is not changing. So dz, well, I mean, we, we can always write, we're always free to write dz, just taking the differential, so write somewhere else. So um, dz is equal to dx plus i dy. For that matter, uh, we'll use this a bit later on. We can also write z is equal to r e to the i theta. So dz we can also write as um, dr times e to the i theta um, plus r times, if we differentiate with respect to theta, it would be i, brings an i down times e to the i theta d theta. So we've got sort of two possible versions of what dz uh, can be. Now, if we first see what happens uh, in this bit from 0 to uh, o to a, well then y is not changing. So the dy bit is 0 and dz is simply dx. So we can now just write z so what is z? Well, z is x plus i y. Uh, y is 0 along that bit, so it's just x. z is equal to x along here, and it's x dx from 0 to 1. OK, so next integral. Um, here, um, z is obviously 1 plus i y. X, x is fixed at 1, and z is equal to 1 plus i y along here. And what about dz? Well, dz, x is not changing, so we've just got i times dy. And y, our integration variable, is varying from 0 up to 1. And finally, our last integral along here, well, now we have theta is constant, constant pi by 4. And we've got r changing. So r is changing from, well, the distance here is root 2 um, to 0. So now we've got r is changing from root 2 down to 0. Um, we're going we're gonna to obviously use this form. Uh, theta is not changing. So we've just got dr times e to the i theta. And theta is pi by 4. So we've got... Um, e to the i pi by 4 from this, and we've got a dr. And what are we actually integrating? Well, we're integrating uh, z, which is r times e to the i pi by 4. So we've got r times e to the i pi by 4, and we're integrating dr. So we've got dr times e to the i theta. Um, 
one of those ETI theses is here, the other one is, is, is this, which is, is Z. Okay, so uh, now we just have to do the integration. So integrating X, it gives us half X squared. Evaluating that at the limits just gives us a half. Um, in this case, um, okay, we've got two bits. We've got I. Uh, so I, when we integrate it, expanding the brackets, we'll get I. Integrating I gives us I Y. Evaluating the limits just gives us I. So we get plus I from the first bit. Then I times I is minus 1. So we have minus Y. Um, so minus Y integrated from 0 to 1 where it's the same as integrating x from 0 to 1. So that's going to give us minus a half. Um, and then we've got this, this, this bit to finish with. So what do we have here? Well, e to the pi by 4 times e to the pi by 4 is e to the pi by 2, which is just i. So we've got um, plus i. And then... Uh, We've got R, which is um, integrates to give half R squared. And that's evaluated at limits 0 and root 2. So when we plug the root 2 in, we get minus uh, root 2 squared, which is um, minus 2 over 2. So we get minus i overall. So this cancels this, this cancels this, and we get the answer zero as we expect.